So the next project is called Energy Tree, and these are freestanding trees that absorb solar energy. I love the fact that those things can collect enough energy to run the whole building. And it's an example of how high tech can look beautiful. The World Expo happens every four years. And since the first one in London in 1851, it's always been about showcasing the very latest technologies. The 2021 World Expo is gonna take place in Dubai, and a New York design company is building an incredibly ambitious sustainability project there. We did the design in the New York studio, and we had a very ambitious program from the outset, and that was to create something completely self-sustaining, generating all of its own power, cooling, generate all of its own water. So this is the original concept model. So what you're seeing is that all of the exhibition space is actually sunk below the ground, and then we take the landscape up over the rest of the building. So what that means is that actually all of the interior of the building is very heavily insulated. So from the beginning, we've reduced the problem of cooling to a minimum. I see. So then after that, how do you provide all the energy to meet all of those needs? Well, obviously, to put solar panels on the roof, and this is 130 meters across. This wow. Thing. But when we did a calculation, we realized it still wasn't creating enough power. So we had a problem. And so we thought, well, how do we use the landscape to try and solve the rest of the problem? We thought, well, maybe it's a landscape piece, something like a tree. Mm. So Kaz, who's in charge of our industrial design group, took away the kind of issue of a tree and, and, and how does that become a solution? We found this dragon tree that was very prominent and it met some of the architectural attributes we required for this energy tree. It had a stem, it had this reach that could mm -hmm. support this disc up above and uh, importantly, it would create a lot of shade. What we needed to achieve is something that was strong enough to support a fairly lightweight disc up above. There was a company only 10 minutes from the site called Premier Composite Technologies that builds with composites and carbon fiber. It was a perfect match because they also worked with a photovoltaic company, Sunovation, mm -hmm. and they could help us develop this lightweight disc at the top. Hi, Gabrielle. How's it going in the Dubai factory? Everything is fine. Look uh, what I found. Ah, I remember that. That's this steering wheel from the yacht that was the inspiration for the E-trees. We uh, use the actual uh, dishes are 17.6 meters in diameter, so they are super large. They still need to provide enough uh, stiffness uh, that the uh, glass photovoltaic panels do not crack. It tracks the sun from morning through to evening around a vertical axis, and we're able to optimize the angle at about 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. And overnight, it returns back to its beginning position for the next day. So far, this enormous innovation appears as a one-off, but there's already talk of making this reproducible. Basically, an industrial design product for other sites. We could be looking at a whole new way of building renewable, off-the-grid, large-scale structures. I thought this cocoon house was very fascinating because it didn't look like a regular house. I think the play of light across some of the organic surfaces was quite beautiful. I was very curious about how they spackled the inside of those curved walls. It looks so beautiful and smooth on the inside. I'm, I'm like, how did they do that? The cocoon house is designed around some very important architectural principles. It's designed to be very specific to this site, and yet it's also designed to be replicated. That's confusing. How can that be? Nina, I'm getting some mixed messages here. This house is so specific to this site, and yet it can be built anywhere? How does all that work? It's actually more an approach to the site, which is replicable. So I always tell my students, when you design and draw a site plan, the first thing we need to know is where's the north. Mm -hmm. And then we need to know where the prevailing breeze is coming from, which is from the south. And then we need to know our sun path. So this house is very much based on this really simple, basic passive house principles, which is about collecting solar heat gain from the south and retaining that heat in the northern wall. Wow, Joe, I'm looking at this house. I'm seeing a lot of curves. Yeah, it was quite complicated. It definitely was a challenge for sure. Each of the shingles from the top down, they're steamed in a steamer to the radius of the bend of the roof. This little section here could take a week to 10 days. Wow, week to, to 10 days. 
is another uh, example of the radiuses in the house. These are the main structures. They were made off-site, uh, a company called Unilam. They were fabricated and designed as we were building the foundation. Now tell me about these uh, sheetrock curves. How do you do that without getting any seams? How do you bend sheetrock like that? There's some scoring, but there's what we use is called the wiggly board. It's a plywood that is made to bend. That's the first layer. And then there's two layers of drywall on top of that. So this house is a pilot, almost a prototype, right? Anybody could have this house because it would be replicable. Yes, now that it's built, it could definitely be replicable. Wow, I love how these skylights really illuminate the hallways. Each piece of glass is a different color. We had to match Nina's uh, color scheme, and there's interlayers inside the glass itself. Kind of like a car windshield when you have that film inside oh, of it. So it's not tinted. It's part of the glass. It's part of the interlayer in between the glass. Now, Nina told me she was inspired by the color palette of a Turner painting. And now that I know that, I think she really nailed it. Now, tell me about these panels up here. They look really unusual. They are. We eliminated the curb and waterproofed the skylight framing itself right into the structure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm used to seeing skylights that are added on to the exterior of the roof, and these are all part of the design. Yes, this is a one nice, sleek look. So, Scott, when you walk in here is when you can really see the curve. Oh, yeah. Not a seam anywhere. The curve is actually based on um, the idea that this house revolves around light. And so the eggshell shape here takes in the shadow projections. Okay, so I'm starting to get it. We have the site, we have the curve. What's the third element that's driving this? It's the experience of the house and well-being in the house uh, comes paramount. So even though this is a gold lead certified house, it's an effective element that's actually serving the affective design of the house. So architects like Richard Neutra throughout time have used um, reflecting pools as a design element. I really like what Nina said about effect serving affect. The mark of a true innovation is that it solves a functional problem but delivers a positive emotional response as well. And you'd have to say the self-sustaining solar-powered cocoon house does exactly that.